Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our midweek online uh, slot today. Uh, I'm really pleased uh, that you can join us. Uh, this is a new look for us. And um, as you know from last time, we're doing a few different things with these slots at the moment. Um, and today it's great to have Emily with us. Emily is our church centre manager. She's also uh, doing a biblical counselling internship with us at St Peter's at the moment. And today we're going to be thinking about how Christians change or how we grow as Christians. Emily is going to explain a really helpful biblical model for understanding that. Uh, but first, Em, uh, let me ask you this. How do you think we normally think about uh, how we grow or change as Christians? What's our kind of working model that we often start with? I think we start with a few different things. So um, sometimes we think of behaviour change, don't we? So um, I guess uh, I often fall into the thing of thinking, well, actually, if I if I read my Bible more, um, if I'm really diligent about going to church, if I, oh, if, if I spend a good couple of hours each day praying, uh, that will really change me. That will make all the stuff that I really struggle with much easier. That'll make all the difference. Um, now, let me be clear. I'm not saying those things aren't really good things. Um, we should do all of those things. Um, but that's very much behaviour change. It doesn't go very far. Um, and I think often it can end up a bit like a New Year's resolution. So, you know, you make a good plan. You think, right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get my Bible reading in order this year. And then three weeks into January and you're kind of going, oh, I'll just skip this day or that'll be fine. I won't do that. And you're just slowly not making the changes that you thought you might make, um, basically because your change hasn't really gone deep enough, I suppose. And so uh, that sounds familiar to me and um, I guess to, to many others too. What's different then about this model? What's particularly helpful, do you think, about the model you're going to show us today? So I think the best thing about this model is that it does go far enough. So... Yes, it thinks about behaviour change. Yes, it thinks about our situations. It doesn't ever deny that situations can be really hard um, and we can go through tough times. But it's trying to get deeper than that, much deeper than that. It's trying to get to the level of our, our hearts, the inner workings of uh, our thoughts, our feelings, the inner centre of who we are, uh, and that in relation to God in particular. Um, and so it gets much, much deeper uh, than any of those kind of behavioural change uh, things do. Um, yeah, it's, it's a great model and it's, it's really helpful for just going deeper, doing that thing that the Bible encourages us to do, but we're never quite sure how it works or how to do it. Well, that's great. I mean, we, we've talked about this need for Christians to, to dig deeper below the surface of our behaviour and circumstances. Uh, often in sermons, we don't quite get the chance to explain the detail of what that looks like. So I think you've got a, a diagram you're going to talk us through and, and show us some of those details. Yeah, so hopefully I'm going to attempt to screen share. Uh, let's see if this works. Give me a second. Uh, right. So there we go. So hopefully uh, you'll be able to see my screen share, my little picture. Um, so this is the diagram. This is the kind of model of change uh, that we're thinking about. It's called the Three Trees. Um, so it was created by um, David Paulison um, for one of his uh, courses for um, CCEF, um, <clears throat> who are over in America. They're the Christian Counseling Educational Foundation uh, in America. Um, uh, and uh, if it's all right, I'm going to start by reading as uh, Jeremiah 17, because um, that's what this model is, uh, I guess, based on specifically. So Jeremiah 17 uh, verses 5 to 10 say this. Thus says the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good come. He shall dwell in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its shoots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind 
to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. So um, yeah, that's, that's where this diagram is kind of taken from um, uh, and uh, I suppose put into a visual format uh, so we can really get to grips with the change that the Lord is talking about uh, in his word here. Um, so uh, what I'll do is I'll just talk you through uh, the different bits of the diagram. Rob, if you're not sure about any of it, uh, do chime in and ask me to clarify a little bit. That's fine. Um, but it starts off with the sun uh, up at the top. Um, so the idea here is that that's the heat. Uh, that's the situations uh, we're going through. Um, so that might be something uh, really straightforward. It might be as simple as, I don't know, a traffic jam um, would be a great example. That's a situation you might find yourself uh, in uh, would be a traffic jam um, but it could be obviously things like uh, illness, uh, bereavement, a global pandemic perhaps. Um, it's just all about uh, thinking through what we actually find ourselves um, in, in our everyday lives I suppose. Uh, and then um, so then you go around to um, the sort of the thorny tree um, which is also called the bad fruit and um, so it's how do I react, how do I I suppose in my sinful self without really thinking, react to the heat, the situation that I find myself in. So again, taking that example of, um, uh, of the uh, car, um, the traffic jam. Um, okay, so you're in a traffic jam, that's your situation. How do you react? You might get really angry. Um, I don't know how you react in a, uh, in a traffic jam, but you might. <laughs> Um, yeah, so you might get cross, you might slam on your brakes, you might honk your horn. Um, yeah, you might just sit there despairing because you're never going to get to the place you want to get to in the time you want to get there. Um, those are all that kind of thorny, bad fruit type responses. Uh, and then if you think about that, um, you get some consequences off that, don't you? So again, in that traffic jam, you honk your horn, you slam your brakes, maybe you slam into the person that's in front of you and suddenly you've created a whole new uh, traffic jam on top of the one that was already there. Um, but the point of this model is that we don't just stay there. So we don't just go, oh, right, that's, that's what's going on. Um, I'm really angry, right, I should not be so angry. Um, instead, what this encourages us to do is think about the root. Um, so that's down to underneath that thorny tree, that heart, uh, where it says bad root, what are my motives? Um, so what's going on underneath all of that? Uh, and perhaps particularly within that, what's going on with my relationship with the Lord uh, and with the people that the Lord has made? Um, so what am I not believing about God actually in that moment? And maybe I'm not believing that he's in charge. Uh, and so, yes, all right, there's a traffic jam, but it's not the end of the world um, because God is in charge. It's a very simple example, but you get the kind of idea is what are my motives? What's going on behind the way I'm reacting? Uh, and then we go over to the cross. So that's where you do that work of going, well, actually, OK, what is the truth? What does the Lord say? If God is in charge, what does that mean? In that very moment where I sit in this traffic jam, what does it mean for the other people around me that God is in charge? What does it mean for everything that God is in charge in that moment, in that traffic jam? Um, yeah, so, so we think about the cross, we think about all God's promises are kind of captured in that idea. Um, so uh, all of his salvation promises, all of his promises to be with us, uh, to be our God, all of the ways in which we see him work through his word. Uh, and then the idea is that as we turn to God in those moments, as we think that through, uh, as we look at what, what he's saying to us in those moments, uh, is that good root. So that's going over to that heart on the other side, uh, is that how do I turn to God? Okay, so given that God is good, but I'm in a traffic jam. Okay, how do I turn to him at that moment? And then out of that heart that is turning to God, turning away from ourselves, turning to the Lord, is hopefully good fruit grows. So that response of good fruit grows. So rather than just saying, I'm angry, I need to stop being angry. It takes us much deeper, much further in. 
ask the Lord to change us because he's the only one that can really change us. Uh, and then out of that, good fruit and hopefully good consequences uh, grow. So yeah, that's the basic basic idea of the diagram. And the Perfect. I, I find um, uh, it reminds me of Jesus saying, good trees produce good fruit, bad Absolutely. trees produce bad fruit. Um, so if we're just trying to change the fruit, we're never going to get anywhere. It's the tree that's the issue and, and ultimately the, the roots, uh, as you say. And I love how um, it, it allows us to um, kind of apply the cross and the gospel and the promises of God into really common, annoying situations. We don't just have to think about the cross and what God says in church or in our Bible study, but actually it can make a difference in a traffic jam too. Um, but it, th that's the theory. Uh, does it, in your experience, Em, does it, does it work in practice? Um, so I guess both in the immediate traffic jam situations, mm -hmm. but also as you take people through this in, um, in conversation, uh, maybe in, in a counseling situation or friends talking together, how does this actually work out in practice? Um, well, if we've got time, I'll, uh, I'll give you a little example um, from my life. But yeah, it does work. Um, I can safely say that it's worked for me um, and it's also worked for people that I've walked alongside. So it's worked for me in really ordinary situations. Um, it's worked for me when I've gone through really tough times, actually, over the past few years. So I first um, learned about this uh, probably about three years ago, three and a half years ago. And ever since then, um, it really has made a massive difference to how I've handled some, some particularly tough times, I suppose. Um, but it also makes a difference, I think, to how I've handled some fairly ordinary times. Um, so a uh, little example. Um, basically, I don't really like being recorded. I don't like having my photo taken. I'm, I'm just not that keen. Uh, and so as I was thinking about this morning and what we were about to do and how we were going to have to record, um, that's that's my situation. So we've got to record something for a, a devotional time. Um, uh, now, the bad fruit, I suppose, that came out of that for me was a slight low level anxiety. You know, is the tech all going to work? Uh, am I going to say the right things? Um, is, is, is everyone going to really listen? Um, am I going to be clear? What if I'm not clear? Lots and lots of questions going round and round uh, in my head, causing some some slight low level anxiety. Um, but therefore I thought, well, you know, let's put this into practice in this moment. Uh, what's going on? What's going on underneath that? Um, and although that's just a really normal thing, a lot of people uh, would feel anxious about these sorts of things. Um, I realised that for me, in some ways, a lot of what it's about is I want people to like me. I want people to think I'm, you know, I'm competent and I'm doing a good job. Um, uh, and actually, what am I not remembering about the Lord in that moment? Well, I'm not remembering that actually it's him that's giving me the job to do. Um, and that in salvation, in Jesus, he's already pleased with me. Um, so however well or badly this one goes, um, won't make any difference uh, to my relationship with God. Um, and so therefore, you turn to God in that moment. And I realised I had to repent um, of putting everything on me. Um, but also turn to him in faith and, and ask him to, to make it work um, in a way that I couldn't do myself, that I couldn't control. Um, so yeah, so that's just a really little example, um, but it gives you a good start to see how this can work in reality. Yeah, I, I think one of the, the great insights of, of this is uh, it shows us that <clears throat> um, underneath our, our behaviour, our circumstances, our responses to the things that are going on in our lives, is always about God. Uh, we, we tend to, to, I tend to cut God out of it, I suppose. Think of him in the big picture way, but in the nitty gritty, I just need to manage my emotions or my reactions or whatever. This, I think, helps me to see, actually, Robert, whatever you're dealing with responding to, your heart is, is engaging or not with God in that moment. And that's what will make the difference to, to how I behave. I think this digs below the surface in that way really helpfully and from what you've said there I, I can see now how, how that can work in small and big ways in in people's lives and um, how do you think that this uh, could be helpful to us as a church uh, or to individuals listening as well what sort of difference might it make if we 
took on board this understanding of uh, how we change to our church life, do you think? Mm. So I think, um, you know, as individuals, um, you can see I've just done a little example of that. Um, but actually, uh, the joy of this um, model of change is that it, it really works for, yes, those ordinary everyday things, but also for the really tough things that we go through, the really hard times uh, that we walk through. Um, and I think the more that I've got to grips with how it works, um, the more I've been able to apply it um, to my own life in those minor moments and in those big moments. Um, I think it can really help us to get to grips with the fact that it is God who changes us, um, but that actually it's all about our hearts. It's all about that heart change, uh, not just, yeah, behavioural change, not just changing the fruit. Um, but changing the heart and that that's ultimately what he wants um, in our lives um, and then I guess for uh, us as a church family I suppose the big thing is that it can I guess who are the people that are going to ask you these questions and um, we talk a lot don't we about uh, church family and getting deeper with one another and caring for one another properly uh, on a really uh, deep level um, but I'm not convinced that we always know quite what that looks like um, you know how often the conversations that we end up having with people are quite surface level um, so we might end up I guess knowing quite a lot about people's heat their situation what they're going through and um, we might even see some of their bad fruit you know you might see someone getting a bit irritated or grumbling uh, or getting very anxious those are things we see in each other but how often do we see the motives? How often do we see that heart behind what's going on? How often do we encourage each other to think about the truth in our circumstances, what God says? Um, I guess we can't share everything with everybody um, and that's okay, uh, but we can share very deeply with some people. And so I want to challenge us, I suppose, uh, to see who are those people, who are the people in your life who would ask you these questions. Um, I've been really privileged to have a couple of people in my life who will ask me these questions and it's really hard. Um, so if you feel a bit daunted by that idea, uh, that's okay. I was a bit really daunted as well when I first started thinking about it. Um, but it is really worthwhile. So I, I would really encourage uh, you to think about those people who can care for you in that way. That's so helpful Emma. Uh, just seeing the diagram on the screen as, as you talk us through that to, to think in terms of uh, yeah have you got people who will ask you three four and five type mm. questions looking at that diagram as you say we, we spend a lot of time on on one and, and two and that's great but have you got people and are you that person for others who, who will ask the three four and five questions and, and help them think those through. I remember we were preaching through Malachi just before Christmas and um, in one of the passages I was preaching there in chapter two I think and there's a lot of why questions that keep getting asked by God and by the people and and that's the technique Malachi uses to, to dig below the surface and think about exposing motives and the truth and those those why questions why, why are we reacting this way um, can be a great a uh, little word to actually do that, that digging down below the surface. And thanks so much. I find that personally a really helpful diagram. I hope that um, we'll grab a hold of it as a church um, and uh, begin to um, put it into practice in our relationships. Uh, thanks so much for explaining it to us uh, this morning. Thank you for having me. And uh, do keep uh, watching uh, these uh, midweek online slots. Uh, so next time, next week, Chris Knowles is going to be uh, uh, leading the session and he'll be doing a, a devotional more in the style that uh, we were doing last year. So if you've been missing that style, it's coming next week and then all sorts of exciting things after that. But we'll say goodbye for now. Thanks so much for being with us.